Today, I've got something pretty interesting to show you. This is the BFG-1. You can probably guess what that stands for. These were originally known as the TOZ-123. They were made in Russia, but when they were imported into the States, they were given the name BFG-1. So this model is the civilian variant of the infamous KS-23, which is a four-gauge shotgun made by the Russians. Now, to be fair, it's not an actual 4-gauge, at least not by American standards. The equivalent gauge here in the States is approximately 6.27. So if you're familiar with the old stories of how these guns came about, the story goes that the Russians, in their infinite wisdom, were faced with an interesting problem. In one of their arms plants, a few of their 23mm anti-aircraft cannons were being rejected for quality control reasons, so they didn't really know what to do with those barrels. So some crazy and magnificent bastard said, Hey, I know what to do with these. Let's make some shotguns out of them. So that's exactly what happened. They took those 23mm anti-aircraft barrels and fashioned a shotgun around the rest of them. Or so the story goes. The original KS-23 barrels were rifled, but these ones being the civilian versions are smooth bore. So whether that means that they just dreamed these barrels out or fabricated new ones, I couldn't tell you, but if I had to guess, I would say it would be the former given the construction of the barrel. This video is just going to be a basic overview. We'll do some shooting and whatnot another time. But for now, let me go ahead and break it apart and show you how it works. So the design on these is actually incredibly, incredibly simple, and you'll see what I mean in just a second here. So to start the breakdown process, we first need to remove the end cap, the magazine tube, which holds the barrel in place via just a standard locking ring. That also has your sling swivel there. Once that's off, the barrel, with a little bit of encouragement, will just pop straight out. Now the barrel does have two little indentations here that it fits into. It's just the shoulders there, which holds it in place, keeps it from rotating. Just pop straight out. So then like most shotguns, it just simply pulls forward. The bolt, bolt carrier, and forend all simply just slide out of there like that. This is your bolt. The rotating four lug design, your basic extractor, and a firing pin that protrudes quite a bit for some reason. Just because of the nature of the design, I suppose, since it's so big. Who knows? But locks in place. Firing pin can then be pressed. Spring loaded, nothing fancy, really. So the fore end is pretty simple for a shotgun. Uh, you have your two control arms here, one of which you'll notice is longer than the other one. Of course, it has the cutouts for the bolt to sit on there, matching cutouts here for the bolt itself. It just sits in there. Nice and neat, just like that. But one of those is longer than the other ones for one reason. There is a locking lever here at the bottom of the receiver that controls an arm. Let's see if I can show you here from the inside. So that locking lever controls the other end of that arm right there, which will butt up against that uh, longer section of the fore end will prevent it from traveling rearward, essentially locking the bolt forearm in place. Just has to be depressed to be able to move. And uh, curiously, unlike other shotguns which unlock uh, once fired, that does not. It has to be depressed every single time you want to cycle it, whether the hammer has been dropped or not. So that's an interesting design. Very simple, very robust, which is a theme you're going to be seeing here quite a bit. So taking the forehand apart, simple, you've just got a basic end cap here, which threads right out. And this will just pop straight out. And you've got just pressed steel on there, which will shoulder on the 
end of the wood there for the forend. Now, I will be eventually uh, 3D printing and then resin casting out of the 3D print a closer alternative forend, which, which will be uh, similar to the KS23, but that's gonna be a while. It's in the works. So then moving down the line, you've got your magazine tube, which is just a really, really simple tube here threaded on both ends. I'm assuming the same thread pitch, but I'm not going to find that out because this is secured in there very, very tightly. And frankly, I don't want to force it because uh, replacement parts for this are non-existent. So that's staying nice and threaded in the receiver. But as you might imagine, it's really no different than other shotguns. You've just got an end cap in there. It's uh, spring loaded, which of course pushes the shells out backwards which interfaces on the receiver itself to stop it from uh, coming out all the way. On the other end, you have the same sort of end cap, but this one is held in place by just divoting the end of the tube itself. So, like I said, incredibly, incredibly simple and pragmatic solutions for everything here. All right, moving further back still, let's take out the trigger group here. It's held in place with just one little pin which can be tapped out. There we go. Just a simple pin, nothing fancy, identical on both ends. So as far as I can tell, it's not inserted or taken out one way or the other, it's just however it goes. And the trigger group will just pull straight out the bottom of the receiver. With a little bit of encouragement, there we go. And there you have the trigger group. Once again, nothing fancy whatsoever. You just have a basic cross bolt safety. Your elevator is built in. Just a really rudimentary design. I'm not taking this apart because well, there's really no reason to, but this is how everything looks, how everything fits together. So that's that. So this little piece of stamped sheet metal here is, believe it or not, actually the ejector. It sits on a pin in the receiver, it simply slaps over top of it, nothing really holding it in place other than the bolt itself, keeping it from popping off. And this little notch, this little indentation here is what will actually kick the shells out. So all that leaves still then is the stock itself. Now, the stock has a very basic recoil pad attached to it, perhaps not quite as big as you might want for something of this gauge, but that aside, the stock is actually very, very nice quality wood. It has a little bit of striation there, almost a tiger stripe look. And I really, really dig that. But let's go ahead and take the butt pad off. Now, maybe a little hard to see, but there are actually two little slits in the rubberization there. That's just a basic flathead screwdriver can fit into nicely. And reach the two screws. So once we've got that off of there, you can see on the underside of it, this is number 23 made in 1998 which means that there are approximately at least two dozen in the country, perhaps less, maybe some were lost or destroyed or who knows, but there's just a handful of these that were imported. On the inside of the stock, we also have those same numbers there. You've got 98 and 23. So on the stock itself is just attached via a flathead bolt really down in there. So long screwdriver is necessary for this. And there we go. So there's your bolt. It's got two washers on there for some reason instead of just one, but that's all there is to it. So then here's your bare receiver. 
Just one piece of what looks to be stamped metal. And that's it. It's one last thing to note. The locking ring here is just pressed on and then pinned on right there, straight through. The hole drilled through the barrel, I'm assuming. If you're familiar with AK building, it's kind of like that. And then up at the front, you have the same sort of arrangement. You just have a ring with the front sight dovetailed in to that assembly, pressed onto the barrel, then drilled and pinned on the very end there. Which is convenient because if that means if you wanted to, I don't know, SBS this thing and make it look like an actual KS-23, all you'd have to do is press that pin out, press this a little further down, re-drill it and re-pin it, and you'd be good to go. But that's another story for another day. There you have it, the BFG-1, also known as the TOZ-123, or the KS-23. Oh yeah, this is how you load the thing. Good to go. <laughs>